Hi guys, if you're female and you've stumbled upon this video, you're sexually active and you've started seeing your periods, then this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about vaginal discharge, the ones that are normal, the ones that are abnormal and how the abnormal ones can affect fertility. So if you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Amarachi Ijeoma. I am a fertility physician and my channel focuses on women's health and fertility. So if you want more content like this, kindly subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell below and drop your comments. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus only on the common infections that can cause infertility. I'm going to start with Chlamydia trachomatis. Now guys, the name sounds... No, it is not as rare as it sounds. It is actually very common. In fact, it is the number one most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease now before i go into that i'm going to explain to you guys what pelvic inflammatory disease is it just means that you have an infection that have that has ascended upwards to the womb your tubes sometimes even to your ovaries yeah this can actually cause infertility so i'm going to focus on what chlamydia trachomatis is it is a bacterial infection gotten from vaginal oral or even anal sex this infection is common in young women it also affects men by the way but i'm focusing on the women for this video so it affects younger women and usually at the beginning you might not have any symptom but with time you might now notice that you're having painful urination you're having bleeding in between your periods that is you finished your period and before your next period you are spotting or after sexual intercourse you're seeing blood and then your vaginal discharge is now foul smelling and then it's either pus like pus or yellowish or greenish vaginal discharge the treatment for chlamydia trachomatis is antibiotics because it's a bacterial infection so there is actually treatment it's difficult to treat but it is treatable the second most implicated infection that can actually affect fertility that can actually cause pid is gonorrhea i know that most of you have heard about gonorrhea before yes it is quite common and it is the most second most common cause of pid it is a bacterial infection that is actually gotten through sexual intercourse now just like chlamydia when you have gonorrhea most times you don't have any symptoms so some women can have gonorrhea for a long time and will not know until there is a complication but when the symptoms arise you complain of painful urination bleeding in between periods and bleeding after sexual intercourse vaginal discharge associated with gonorrhea is a yellow green vaginal discharge so this is not a normal vaginal discharge so the third one i'm going to talk about is trichomonas vaginalis again this is common this is very common trichomonas vaginalis is a bacterial infection that is actually gotten through sex so as, as usual at the beginning you might not actually have any symptom but when you start having symptom you're complaining of redness redness of your vulva that's your your private parts your um genitals and then you complain of itching burning sensation pain when you're urinating pain when you're having sex and then most importantly see the vaginal discharge is usually yellow green yellow green vaginal discharge the treatment for trichomoniasis is actually antibiotics bacterial vaginosis bacterial vaginosis is actually not a sexually transmitted infection but when you have bacterial vaginosis it can actually put you at risk 
of actually getting chlamydia trachomatis infection. How do you get bacterial vaginosis? You get bacterial vaginosis when you use, you see all of those things on TikTok and Instagram where they're talking about, oh, feminine wash to make your vagina smell good. Or uh, let's steam the vagina with herbs and let's uh, use warm water to wash, wash inside of the vagina with our fingers. No, guys, no, it's a no, no. Because these things, your vagina has like bacteria already there that protects it so by the time you are using all of these soaps all of these things to wash it then you are disturbing the normal ph of your vagina the normal um, bacteria will multiply and when they multiply they can ascend all the way to the womb into the tubes and actually cause damage to your fallopian tubes bacterial vaginosis actually presents with a fishy odor so when your vagina is smelling like fish that's bacterial vaginosis yes it can also be asymptomatic but when it's symptomatic you have the fishy smell you're having a thin gray or green discharge mostly gray discharge vaginal discharge and then also itching vaginal itching and burning sensation when you're urinating the treatment for bacterial vaginosis is antibiotics yeast infection now this is the one that we all know about and yes is that popular because out of every four women three would have yeast infection at least once in their lifetime now yeast infection is a fungal infection and it's that infection that actually causes you to be itching a lot now let me tell you how it happens it's popularly called toilet infection but hey there's really nothing like toilet infection we are talking about yeast right here so our vagina normally has yeast yeast also helps in protecting the vagina but it's not only yeast that is there we have other bacteria in that same vagina now these bacteria they're helping to keep the yeast in place in check so for example lactobacillus it is the bacteria that actually doesn't allow the yeast to grow more than it's supposed to be so if you are now taking plenty antibiotics because maybe you have headache you run to the pharmacy go and buy antibiotics or you have itching you go to the pharmacy go and buy antibiotics then you are killing some of these good bacteria in your vagina and once you kill off that lactobacillus it will cause the yeast to grow and multiply and once this yeast multiplies it is actually going to cause infection it will cause excessive itching burning sensation redness white thick white thick vaginal discharge now it's not only antibiotics that is implicated in yeast infection we have pregnancy because when you're pregnant there's high level of oestrogen that female hormone in your body and it actually predisposes you it puts you at risk of actually having yeast infection another one is low immune system so if you have any disease that will actually cause your immunity to be low that's the ability for your body to fight infections naturally any disease that can cause that can predispose you to actually having yeast infection the treatment for yeast infection is antifungal as opposed to the other infections i've been talking about that is antibiotics this is because yeast is a fungal infection all of these infections when they are not treated immediately or when they are not treated properly or when they are not treated at all can actually cause PID yes including the yeast infection depending on the severity and how long the yeast infection has been there along with every other infection of cold can actually cause pelvic inflammatory disease the last vaginal discharge that I'm going to be talking about is the normal discharge so the normal vaginal discharge 
actually is clear the color is clear but can range from a clear to a milky whitish discharge it's usually sometimes thick sometimes thin depending on the time of your cycle you are in okay so different women have actually have different normal quantity of vaginal discharge so my normal might be different from your normal but your normal quantity increases when you're breastfeeding when you're sexually aroused or when you're ovulating the normal smell of the vagina is a slightly acidic smell but sometimes there is no smell at all, no odor at all. Before I actually tell you how to prevent these infections, I'm going to use a diagram to actually show you how these infections can actually prevent you from getting pregnant. This is the uterus, also called the womb. This is the neck of the womb, called the cervix. This is the vagina, these are the fallopian tubes, and, and these are the ovaries. Normally, during ovulation, the egg is released into the tube and the sperm comes to fertilize it, forming a zygote. Then this zygote travels through the tube for four days, then implants inside the womb on the fifth day. But in PID, the infection that ascended from the vagina goes up to the tubes and when not treated properly or early, it can cause complications like scarring of the tubes. These scars makes it difficult for the sperm to go and meet the egg for fertilization. Or if some sperm cells manage to get to the egg and fertilize, the already damaged tubes from the scars will make it travel longer so if by the fifth day it is not inside the womb it will implant in the tubes this is called ectopic pregnancy or tubal pregnancy nature has made the womb thick enough with muscles to allow it expand when a baby is growing but the tubes are not made for that so on or before nine weeks of pregnancy, it will cause the fallopian tubes to burst open. This is life-threatening and is considered one of the major obstetric emergencies. So this video is not for you to feel like when you have an infection, you now automatically feel like you're going to be infertile. No. The idea is to treat when you have an infection, treat as early as possible and treat properly. And this just means you have to see your doctor. Because how these infections actually cause infertility is when you don't treat them properly and you don't catch them early. They can ascend and cause PID. And women can have PID for a long time without actually getting diagnosed, without actually knowing. Maybe they might find out when they just go to see their doctor for something else. And maybe during a vaginal examination, the doctor suspects a PID or during an ultrasound scan or a blood test or a high vaginal swab. Anytime your doctor picks this PID and treats properly, then it doesn't affect fertility. Except the PID PID has caused complications in your womb or in your fallopian tubes. So because if it causes scarring of the fallopian tubes, then it can prevent fertilization. The people at risk of these infections are people that have multiple sexual partners. Because if you have multiple sexual partners, you don't know who has been exposed to an infection that is giving it to you. And those other people can also have multiple sexual partners. If you are practicing unsafe sex, meaning that you're having sex without condom, I mean, whatever disease the person has, the person is giving to you. Wearing damp panties, I mean, thrush, yeast infection can also be gotten when you are wearing damp pants because you're not allowing the vagina to breathe and then there's there is heat in that area and then with the wet panties, it gives the medium for, for fungus, for fungi to grow. People that take too much antibiotics. So how do you prevent yourself from having these infections? One, avoid multiple sexual partners. Two, practice safe sex. Three, don't abuse antibiotics. 
Take antibiotics only when it's prescribed by your doctor. Four, allow your vagina to breathe. The proper way to wash your vagina is using water alone. Clean water. Using a room temperature water or a lukewarm water is fine to wash your vulva. It's fine to wash your genitals. And when you're washing, use the pulp of your finger. You see that opening, the introitus, the opening? You use the pulp of your finger and wash on, as in above it, wash on top of it. Don't go inside with your fingers. Mm -mm, don't do that. If you found this video informative, if you found it interesting, and you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and like this video. See you next week.